What's up guys, Mike Builds back with another battery review. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Vader 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. If you guys have seen some of my previous videos, I've already reviewed a few of these batteries. I've seen a lot of good things about Vader and I've decided I wanted to try one. I scooped this particular one off Amazon for $169 shipped to my house. It's crazy how cheap these batteries are getting you guys. A few years ago, you couldn't buy one of these under 300 bucks. Now we're, you know, sub $200 and I'm sure they're gonna get even cheaper. They rated at 100 amps continuous. It rated at 5,000 charge and discharge cycles. They say they use grade A cells. It says it has low temp cutoff. And yeah, not much more to say about it. I mean, it's just like the same size as any other 100 amp hour battery on the market. There are tons of them out there now. So in this video, we're gonna fully charge it, fully discharge it. Then we're gonna do a discharge test to see how many amps we can get out of this. Then we're gonna take the battery apart we're gonna test the low temp cutoff. We're gonna see what type of cells they use, look at the build quality, look at the BMS, and give our overall thoughts when we're all done and see how this battery stacks up against what we've already reviewed. And my plan is once we're done reviewing that battery, I'm gonna redo my 12 volt setup and I'm probably gonna put four 100 amp hour batteries in series for my 48 volt setup. So that'll be a good test for all the batteries I've been testing. So look forward to that. But let's see what else you get in the box. So you get the battery itself. Looks like you get a warranty card. Let's see how good their warranty is. Oh, it says here they give you a five year warranty. Pretty interesting. And they also give you this. Congratulations, an extra two years warranty. Share your experience and you'll get an extra two years. So that's cool. Get the instruction book itself. Tells you how you can wire four in parallel, four in series or whatever. Gives you some curves to look at, nice. Also comes with, I believe these are M8 bolts with the little safety caps. But yeah, anyways guys, not much more to say. We're gonna go ahead and start charging this thing, get it fully charged so we can start our discharge test and see how much capacity we get out of it. I've heard good things about these Vaders. I hope to at least get 100. I mean, I've been getting 100 out of all the other cheap batteries I've been testing lately. So I have confidence we're gonna get 100 out of this, but we will see. All right, before we charge it, let's go ahead and check the voltage of the battery and just kind of see what it's resting at. Just curious what they shipped it with, you know? 13.19. Okay, and we're gonna charge it with the same charger we use on all of our tests. And that's it. We're gonna let this thing charge so we get a green light. Then we can do our capacity test. All right, guys, we got a green light on the battery charger. So our Vader battery is completely charged. Now we're gonna move it over to the table to start our capacity test. Just like usual, we're gonna be using this shunt system in order to record capacity and voltage and all the good stuff. I do wanna do a separate review on this because people keep asking me about it, but I will put a link if you wanna get one. And the Harbor Freight 2000 watt inverter, this is gonna be how we're gonna generate a load. We're going to plug in a big 48 volt battery charger into this in order to get approximately a 0.2C load. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything connected so we can start our capacity test on the Vader battery. All right, guys, so we have our discharge rig all connected and ready. I have the current shunt all zeroed out, as you can see. So now we're gonna start the test. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. And that in turn is gonna run this charge verter, which I've set the current to pull exactly 20 amps from the battery, which is a 0.2C rating. And that energy is gonna go into my 48 volt off-grid solar power system. I want you guys to be able to see the current really good. We're gonna go ahead and turn the charger on. Okay, for some reason or another, my charge verter doesn't wanna go below four amps. So we're gonna run a test at 24 amps instead of 20, but it shouldn't really make a huge difference in the capacity we get out of this. I'm gonna let this test run until the inverter shuts off. So either the inverter is gonna shut off with low voltage or the battery is gonna shut the BMS off and turn the whole system off. Once that happens, I'm gonna bring you guys back and we're gonna see the final capacity, which is gonna be right here. And it's gonna tell us exactly how many amp hours we've used. So we're gonna let this run and see you guys in a few hours. All right guys, the inverter has gone in low voltage, so I think we're gonna call the test. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut everything down. And it looks like the final results are 101.93 amp hours, or so almost 102 amp hours at a little bit above the 0.2C load. She passed, she pulled full capacity and a little bit above. So we are good on that. The Vader battery gets a pass on the capacity test. Now we're gonna do a full power discharge test. We're gonna put a full load on it and see how the battery behaves. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get the high current protection to trip. It says max discharge 100 amps. So we're gonna see how far we can push it above 100 before the battery shuts down. Go ahead and fully charge the battery again and then we will start that test. The goal of the test is to see if this battery can support 100 amps and then we're actually gonna go slightly over 100 amps and maybe push it a little more than that just to see what the battery can do. But at the bare minimum, we're gonna make sure this can actually do 100 amps just like it advertises it can. If it does 100 amps, it passes the test. I'm gonna set the charge verta to pull a 100 amp load and we're gonna be able to see the data on the little display right here. So I'm gonna get everything connected, get the uh, current draw set to where we want it and we're gonna start the test. All right, we're gonna start kind of low and slowly work the power up. So let's go ahead and kick the charger on. I'm gonna take a second. Here we go, we're going up 79, 80 amps. It's over a thousand watt load. Voltage is holding pretty steady. 84, 85 amps. All right, changing the current on the charger. All right, we're over a thousand watts. There's a hundred amps right there. So we're already at maximum discharge. We're holding 101 amps steady. 
Uh, it's about 1200, almost 1300 watts. The voltage appears to be pretty steady at 12.45, so that's good to see. The inverter appears happy with that. So far it's holding. I'm gonna let this run for a minute, give it like maybe a couple minutes. This thing's been running for a few minutes now and the battery seems to be holding it just fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and crank it up to about 120 amps just to see if the battery shuts off or maybe how high we can actually go before the BMS kicks in or the voltage sags too low and trips the inverter. Go ahead and crank the power up some more. All right, so now we're past the rated output of 100 continuous, about 117 amps. Let's go up a little bit more. Nothing feels hot. The cables are a little warm. Terminals feel okay. Okay, the battery charger stabilized. Look like we're pulling 100 and, almost 130 amps. Okay, went down 127, 128. That's over 1500 watts, which is crazy. You're getting 1500 watts out of just one battery, so that's amazing. Voltage is still above 12, so happy to see that. All right, I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes, just see what it does. I'll update you guys if anything happens. Okay, I got it up to 130 amps. Let's crank it up a little bit more. I don't think we're gonna get much more than this without the voltage sagging too much. Oh yeah, there we go, 100, 130. We just fell below 12 volts, 133 amps, over 1500 watts. The voltage is starting to fall quite a bit, so I don't think I'm gonna push it any further than this. Also, my charger can't go much higher than this, so I'm probably gonna call the test here, 133 amps. You know what, just for you guys, I'm gonna see if I can get it just a little higher. Let's try to put more load on it, just to really test this battery out. I don't wanna damage it, but let's see what we can get out of it. Come on, baby. Okay, the inverter is about to hit. As you can see, the inverter's not very happy, so I think that's all we're gonna get out of this, you guys. Unfortunately, is because of the voltage drop, my inverter is not happy. If you wanted to push this thing even further, you probably could, but you're just gonna get more voltage sag. In my opinion, getting 1500 watts out of one battery, it's pushing over 133 amps continuous. I'm gonna let this run for just a few minutes and just see what it does. I use the thermal camera. I have a very cheap thermal camera, I apologize. But as you guys can see, the actual case of the battery is not hot. Nope, just the terminals are warm. So that's kind of to be expected when you're pulling 130 amps on four gauge wire. I'm gonna call the discharge test a success. This thing is a absolute monster, as y'all can see. This is my favorite part of the video, and I think a lot of you guys as well, is we're gonna take this thing apart and look at the build quality, try to judge the cells, the BMS and all that. This was one of the harder batteries to open. So that's a good thing, I guess, if you think about it because the glue is really strong and it probably seals really well, but I was able to get it open. I haven't looked at it yet. Well, I need to finish getting it open, I should say. Here we go. Oh, Ooh, it stinks. It smells kind of weird. All right, right off the bat we have, looks like they're using multiple eight gauge strands. I count one, two, three, four on the negative side and one big either four or six gauge conductor on the positive side. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and get the whole pack and everything out of the case. The terminals have this goo on them. That's good to see. As far as how it's secured in the case, this is the battery itself and it's got foam all the way around it. And the foam is glued in with this white silicone stuff. I don't know what that is, but they use it kind of on everything. So it's very well secured in there. Also, the entire battery appears to have shrink wrap around it. So that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. <clears throat> oh my God, it doesn't want to come out. Let me see if I can't work this out real quick. Oh, this thing was really in there. Oh, I had to put it on the floor. All right, in the battery box, we have a big piece of sticky foam on the bottom. So that's why this was so hard to pull out because they actually glue it on the bottom as well as on the sides. So that's really good. You don't want your battery moving around, bouncing around in the case. It's covered in shrink wrap, so I might have to take that off. So y'all can see it's just one big solid pack. It's all shrink wrapped around. Looks like our BMS is gonna be underneath this. I guess I'm gonna take the shrink wrap off so we can look at it. I'm gonna try not to destroy this thing because I do plan on using it like I always do in all my battery videos. I'm gonna very carefully cut this with a key. This stuff is thick. <clears throat> And guys, if you're going to do this at home, be very, very careful because this battery is live. It's very easy to short if you're not careful. Oh, wow. Okay. So this design is a little different from what we've seen thus far because the cells are actually bolted. And I personally kind of sort of like that only because if, for example, I wanted to upgrade these cells to something better in the future or just replace them, in theory, I could reuse all these components if I'm careful with them swap out brand new 100 amp hour cells and rebuild this battery. So I do like to see that. I know some people criticize, they rather have the laser welded tabs. Assuming that they're properly torqued, these look like lock nuts and they even put a little bit of a mark on them, assuming that's like letting them know that they torqued it basically for quality control. And you can see they're lock nuts, pretty nice. These look like just standard 100 amp hour cells. I'm gonna try to see if there's any sort of QR code or labeling on the cells. There is something right here. 
So I wonder what that means. Maybe the, it looks like the manufacturer date may have been May 25th, 2024. Maybe that's what that means. And the other number maybe looks like a capacity test, but I'm gonna try to scan that QR code on my QR code scanner tool on my phone and see if it comes up with anything. Upon closer inspection, I was able to find this QR code. My QR scanner did not want to read it. I typed in the number manually and this is kind of what I came up with. So it says the code's right, but the code link seems wrong. Not really sure what that's about. And it says it's made by a manufacturer called Goshen. Anyways, it's saying they're Goshen cells. It does give us a link to the manufacturer's website. Let's click that and see where that takes us. Interesting. I don't know, it's all in Chinese, so I'm not gonna be able to do much with that, but that could be a good thing. They obviously are some brand and they obviously tested above capacity and they do pull good amperage as well. So I would assume these are good cells. As far as the balance wires and everything, it looks pretty good. It's got this little holder that they glued on right here and each wire runs along with a dab of something on there to help secure it after they bolt it. So that's good to see. Now we need to get this panel off so we can look at the BMS. All right, here's kind of a close up of the BMS. It doesn't say exactly what it is, but maybe you guys can decipher this. It's got a model here. It says 100 amps and a bunch of stuff right there. So if anybody knows what this is, let us know in the comments. It does look like a good quality BMS. It uses the mini, it looks like 10 or eight gauge conductors in order to give us a negative connection. And that's kind of standard. You do see that a lot. It says GPS right there. I wonder, wonder what that means. Interesting. Okay guys, next thing we're gonna check is the low temperature cutoff. This says it does low temp protection for charging and discharging. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a load to the battery, which is just gonna be my hobby charger. That way we can see this thing on. Okay, so the charger's on. We're gonna try to freeze the temperature sensor, which is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this up and see if we can't get this thing to shut off on us. Okay, so I did get the low temp charging to work, or I basically put the temperature sensor in freezing water and the charger kicked off. So now I'm gonna remove the sensor and see if the charging resumes. I'm gonna warm it up with my finger. There we go. So the low temp charging protection does in fact work. All right guys, I did repeat my experiment several times. I did confirm it does have low temperature charge protection, but it does not have low temperature discharge protection because every time I got the BMS to kick off charging wise, it wouldn't let me still discharge, which is not a big deal in my opinion because really you damage these batteries trying to charge them below zero. I live in Texas, it doesn't really matter to me anyways, and these are gonna be inside most of their life, but just something to keep in mind. But there's not really much more to look at guys. I'm gonna go ahead and slap this back together into the case. I'm gonna put the shrink back back together, put a little bit of tape to hold it together. I think that's gonna do it for the review of the Vader 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. In my opinion, this thing is pretty good for the price. The build quality seems on par with all the other batteries we've taken apart. It passed the full capacity test. It had a good amount of amperage for the discharge. Happy with the build quality. Overall, I think it's a good value for the money. It was less than 200 bucks. I will put a link in the description if you guys wanna go check it out yourselves. And I'm gonna be very excited to put this in my 12 volt system. I do have a video coming out of the 12 volt system here pretty soon. But now that I have four of these 100 amp hour batteries, I also plan on building a 48 volt pack. That's gonna be in a later video. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Vader. If you guys have one, let me know how it's working out for y'all. We're gonna continue to use and test this long term. And more than likely in a year from now, we will do an update, a recapacity test, and just see how the battery's holding up. I guess that's gonna do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will catch y'all in the next video and have a good day.